What's up, YouTube? Caleb Almond, Almond Landscape here. Um, talking about how to use drainage services, the installation of drainage products and materials and remedies to grow your company. Drainage work is one of those niches that um, if you get really good at it, it can be really good for you. And if you get known for it, it's even better for you. Something I've been saying a lot of lately is you get known more for what you do more of. And the more drainage work you do, the more your reputation and rapport builds in that kind of work. Here at my own house, I'm gonna show you some examples of things you might look for if you're touring a property and you already provide like lawn care services or landscape construction or whatever. We've been uh, redoing the front of the house over the summer here with this board and bat and look and all that. So bear with, and we did new windows and all stuff. So bear with me with all the crap in the background here, but that's, it is what it is. Things you wanna look for if you're walking around a property in a landscape consult or something like that. Number one item I always look for is grading, making sure that you've got good slope and good drainage away. That's the number one thing about drainage, making sure everything slopes away from the house. Here at my place, it is a nightmare because the finish grade was set so low. Mr. UPS man here. Finish grade was set so low, it's tough to get positive grade away from here. It's really challenging. One of the saving graces is we're on a giant sandstone hill here, and I go about right through this area where the dozers cut in years ago when this place was developed. There's about two inches of topsoil and nothing but sand and sandstone below us. So this, uh, this area drains like good. So one of the saving graces now, but if you're in heavy clay soils, you're gonna to need to consider some remedies of what you're gonna to do to get this stuff to drain. And kind of one of the great examples of a place we've got some bad drainage issues, especially if our gutters overflow. So what we've got is, you know, in this area here, we've got some negative grade drainage work or uh, grade work running back towards the foundation. That is far from ideal. What we're gonna to have to do and what gets nasty in here when the gutters overflow because we've got all these tree leaves and all that stuff, the gutters will overflow, overflow periodically. One of the things we're gonna do is we are gonna put a gravel strip through here to help mitigate and minimize the splash on this white um, concrete board here because it gets really ugly. And we wanna manage, you manage and minimize that uh, discoloration. Thanks man, I appreciate it. Another thing we're gonna do, say we had you know more ground and drain, uh, more ground and drainage issues with water coming back towards the house. We would cut in a French style drain through here that's gonna pick up and wick away that water and run it into our uh, storm drain here. Now, this is just kind of a, a ghetto situation right here that we're going to upgrade to a, a, a basin that I'll show you here in a minute. We'll get to that. <clears throat> but grading is number one. So I'm gonna look for issues like that. I'm gonna look for issues like this where we got some ghetto setup. I don't even know what that is about there. It's kind of a de-glorified version of what I'm about to show you here, but we're gonna look for issues like that and we're gonna pro make proposals, right? We're gonna make proposals of like, hey, something we notice in our uh, you know, property evaluations is this, is X, Y, Z. So we want to, I don't know what in the world those chairs are about. I don't know, who knows. Who knows? Um, so another, another thing we're gonna look for is like low wet spots in yards where there is an issue. So here is kind of an example area that you know might sit low and wet when it's rainy or whatever. And so we're gonna look at this. We're gonna, we're gonna see if it's a pain point with the client. We're gonna see if, hey, this area over here, it's always soggy, grass won't grow, drives you crazy, that kind of thing. What can we do? Or, you know, we have some solutions for you that could dry this right up, right? Especially if the downspouts are running just right out onto the ground, right? If uh, we've got green, you know, green growth here on the side of the house, let's say these big trees, the area's always wet. What do we want to do? Well, we can install a French style drain and you're going to see some B-roll footage here of French drain getting put in. But French drain is a great way to dry up some wet areas like this. It's in this most simplest form. It's a trench with some geofabric with open graded stone in it, like this river rock or number 57 of any kind, no fines in it and a perforated pipe. Ideally an ADS double walled perforated pipe. Drain's awesome. We love using that stuff. I'll show you some of that here in a minute. But we're going to install a trench of that through here to pick up water to wick it out of here. We want to be careful and you want to com communicate with your client. You know, a trench through there is going to be really hard on this tree. So we're probably going to want to run it as close to the foundation as we can. We've got utilities here. You're always going to want to call in your utility tickets. 811. Call before you dig. Now, fortunately, electric's overhead. Cool. But we've got communication line and that sucker is just barely below that leaf. So we want to make sure that is always calling in before we break the ground for anything, calling 811. But we're gonna want, want to run that pipe to there. And then the, the next easiest thing about French drain work is 
and drainage in general. We gotta have somewhere to send that water to. So with a laser or a high precision altimeter, zip level, U level, whatever you wanna call it, smart level or whatever, we wanna shoot grade to find a place to run that pipe to. Sometimes it's really challenging. Uh, to find a place to dump water lower to. We gotta mind crossings of utilities, dog fences, irrigation lines, all that kind of stuff. We gotta pay attention to that. We gotta be mindful of that. But we got a lower place to drain to, awesome. Uh, another thing in uh, you know adding drainage to your, to your projects or you know, to upsell, is if you notice that uh, you know, a downspout just runs out to the edge of the property. Hey, we could run this out and put it on a pop-up and I'll show you a pop-up as we walk around the side of the house. If you don't have somewhere lower to drain it to, you might be able to do a dry well. The dry wells are something you're gonna need to talk to an NDS professional about with uh, engineering or you know, determining how much absorption area you're gonna need. So it's gonna be like, essentially it's a barrel with holes in it. You're burying the ground with clean stone around it that allows water to wick uh, and leach, if you will, into uh, the surrounding soils. You want to be careful if you put in a, uh, a like a flow well or a uh, weeper pit or whatever in a hillside because you can potentially load that hillside deep with water and cause a landslide. So be super careful with that, uh, and and you know maybe consult a geotechnical engineer for such things. But here's a pop up. So if you don't have anywhere else to run water to. These pop-ups are a great option. I don't glue mine because I want them to be able to pop off if they get under a lot of pressure. But this thing will will just hum when the when the gutters get the flowing. And you saw this in our other video. But this thing will just come up and blow. I love putting another catch basin. You can see we've had this one in for a while in here to kind of catch you know sediment and other debris. And also it serves as a uh, kind of a, a pressure release or pressure relief, if you will. If this thing were to get clogged or whatever, that water can back up and blow out of here. That's why I like to use solvent welded fittings. So, you know, putting in uh, pop-up drains like that is a really nice uh, solution. But this is what kind of the French drain concept might look like of uh, this double walled pipe, which we really love using the double wall versus a single wall. This stuff's still pretty, still pretty stiff and it's used in farm drainage and just general most any drains. But we love using this double wall stuff. This double wall, it is really strong. So we love using this ADS double wall perforated pipe, but water gets in there and it wicks out. And that's what a, a French drain is gonna do. If you're gonna run drain lines that actually need to conduct water like your downspout lines, you're gonna wanna use what they call solid pipe. I like to use solvent welded pipe. Again, stuff like this for those, for your downspout connections, but French drains, that's the way to go right there. So. Those are the few things we look for. Downspouts that don't have a home. We look for low wet areas and we look for grading that isn't what it should be. So those are the three things when we're doing a property consult and we wanna upsell, and I say upsell, it really is solutioning and adding a solution to drainage work. Miss Brittany with some pizza here and I'm hungry. <laughs> Thank goodness, let's eat. Brittany, you got any drainage tips? <laughs> regarding <laughs> i don't know <laughs> all right folks that's it crazy video but uh those are the things we're looking for we're on a property consult and we're always going to do another thing too if we're putting in any hardscape and we talked about this in the other hardscape video but just in case you didn't catch that if we're putting in a patio and we've got drain lines that are run through there we're going to get the client they pretty much have to it's a non non-starter if they don't we are going to upgrade the drain lines under the area we're going to work because chances are a we're going to hit them anyways when we're doing our excavation and prep but we want to put heavy duty pipe in there so that we don't crush it when we're running our compaction equipment through there so that way even if they only run it a few feet past and go back to their crappy little three inch under you know under powered lines we know there isn't going to be an issue under the pavers that is going to have to get torn up someday so that's another thing that we're going to look for if we're doing a hardscape install so check out that video somewhere here there wherever thanks for watching folks we'll see you an unhappy client is likely to tell 10 to, what, 13 people or something, while a happy client is likely to only tell three people. So that's why the customer service ending, the service, customer service thing is such a big deal, why you need to bend over backwards to keep people happy. It's why Amazon lets you return anything. Even if you're the stupid idiot that bought the wrong stupid thing, you, they, want, they see you as long-term revenue, and they don't want you continuing to shop there. And it's, you kind of got to deal that. You know, don't be a doormat, but you got to know that's kind of stuff.